welcome to today's free training Thursday. I have Abacus Law Trainer Perry Lafferty here with me, and she will be taking us through crucial accounting reports. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them into the sidebar and we'll get to them at the end if we have time. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Perry and she can take us through the presentation. Thank you, thank you. Welcome everybody to our Free Training Thursday. Here it is, the end of September. I really can't believe we're already here, but it's kind of the perfect time for this crucial accounting report little webinar um, because we'll be starting the fourth quarter next week. And it would be great if we can kind of try to get our accounting reports and our billing reports under control because if you do run on a calendar fiscal year, you're gonna be slammed in at the end of December when all the holidays are here. So if we can jump in and maybe get a little bit of a handle on our reports, maybe it will make our fourth quarter a little easier. So uh, here I am, I'm in my Abacus Law Accounting program. Okay, and as you know, if you do have questions, just go ahead and pop them in the question section and I hopefully will be able to pull them up and answer them. Uh, I'm gonna go through a dozen reports, okay? And I'm trying to cover all of the, of the program. So we're gonna look at a couple billing reports as well as some trust reports, as well as some uh, accounting reports. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, the first thing I like to talk about is accounts receivable, since that's under our billing. Uh, you come down to accounts receivable reports, they are listed separately. Now, this is the report that I try to get everybody to understand is going to show all money that is outstanding to your firm. One little side note I'm gonna throw in here is this unpaid invoice maintenance, okay? I'm gonna stay away from that. I really think the account, accounts receivable reports are where you wanna go to show you exactly who owes you what money. So we're gonna open this one up. And I like the aging report, just to take a 10,000 foot view and see where we are. And then of course we can drill down into it and find out, you know, do they owe fees, do they owe costs? but at least the aging report will tell you how old the debt is. All right, so I'm gonna open this up. I go with the defaults that Abacus gives us um, as far as just making sure I get everything in here. Uh, of course, you could indiv individualize these reports by doing them by separate timekeepers, but just to, for a quick view, um, come down here to the preview and it will throw it up on the screen here and show us everything that has been billed that has not been paid. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger because I know the print is so tiny here. But the main thing we're looking at here is the aging. So how old is the debt from the client? Now, here again, this time of year might be a good thing to start looking at what if we need to do write-off, okay? Get those in here, get those uh, completed so that our AR at the end of the year is clean, is true, is real. So your tax accountant's going to need this report at year end. So why don't we go ahead and clean it up, get through all the pages. And uh, let's see, I think this one actually gives you a little graph at the last page. So, ooh, that's kind of fun, right? But um, basically, it gives you the lowdown on who owes you what money, okay? So that's nice and clean and easy. The report I think that goes best with that, because obviously AR is part of our billing program, is your WIP report. So that's the second one we're gonna look at here, and that is tucked away in the productivity report. Now at the end today, I'm gonna to show you how, where you can set up all these reports in one place, so you don't have to go hunt for them all. But just to pull it off the menu here, there's all kinds of productivity reports. I'm not gonna go through them all. I'm just gonna point out the WIP report. So here we are, work in process aged. So once again, I take the defaults that Abacus has given us. And once again, you could narrow this down to timekeeper. So you could set up reports for each timekeeper in your firm if you would like. But today we're keeping it pretty general. Click the preview. And this is all clients matters, right? That 
you have not billed out either cost or fees for. So here again, at year end, why? Why do we have things in here that are over 90 days old that we have not billed? Technically, I would say this should only be things in here over 90 days that are um, your PI type cases, your um, contingent cases, because we know those usually don't get billed till the end. So there's a good reason they may be in here and be a little older than other things. But overall, it gives you a lowdown as to, you know, let me enlarge it a little bit again, as to uh, prior balances, trust balances. So it throws a little bit of AR in here so you can get a good view. But it's going to tell you, you know, if you have fees outstanding. Uh, I shouldn't say outstanding. I mean that have not yet been billed and cost. So once again, why do I need to clean this up? Okay, because... Between your AR and your WIP, that's everything on the billing side, okay? Now, of course, the trust reports are what I think probably very, very important here as far as keeping everybody safe and sound in the bar rules. So we're gonna hit on trust here. And there's two different reports I really like. The detail is my favorite, so the trust report detail. Okay, I'm gonna just show this for a time frame of a couple of months so that it doesn't go on and on. But of course you wanna encompass everything you need and you definitely wanna run this by account if you have more than one trust account. So once again, a preview. And this is gonna show you all of the detail and every matter in trust in each trust account. So this always should be clean. Okay, um, basically you're gonna get it by matter with what's been input, what's been taken out in their balances. And the big deal here is at the very end, making sure that the totals here equal what's in your trust checkbook and what's on your balance sheet. Okay, so if you are doing your reconciliations in Abacus for your trust account, these have to be in balance. Otherwise, you, you would not be able to complete your trust rec. So if you're doing that every month and it's working great and everything's coming through nicely, this report's clean, you don't need to worry about it. But if you're not doing reconciliation in here, you're gonna wanna print this out and make sure it balances to the penny with your, however you're doing your bank reconciliation. Now, the quicker version of that report is the trust summary report. And this one is just one line per matter. So if you're just trying to see, am I in balance without going through all the details, this is the easier one of the two to run. It's shorter. And of course, the last page is going to show you the balances. So you can see that dollar amount again to make sure that this is in tune with your checkbook and with your bank rec. Probably something you already know, right? Because I'm thinking all of you are doing dress recons every month and you're being able to balance to the penny. Okay, so now we'll throw one in from AP just because don't want to leave them out in the cold. So in our accounts payable report, I like this AP unpaid invoice aging. So here again, do we have bills that we've had in our system for months and months and we realize we're never gonna pay them. We wanna clean them up. So once again, your, your accountant is going to want to have an AR report at the end of the year and an AP repen, uh, report at the end of the year. This one's great. Um, basically, it shows you one line per vendor. Remember, mine's a little made up database, so it looks a little weird, but um, it will show you exactly how old uh, items are waiting to be paid, um, whether they're firm total or client total. So just make sure this looks in alignment at year end, um, which now we do the cleanup. Okay, so RGL. Okay, obviously for accounting reports, that's really where we're focusing here. Um, at the bottom of the GL drop down menu is where they are. So, you know, right here, of course, we do have the report menu and you've got reports here as well. I always just start of where, you know, the topic is over there so we can get to them off that list, but they're here too as well. So back to our GL reports. Okay. You know, I used to just have a big five, 
right? My big five accounting reports. Well, going through them to get ready for this little webinar today, I thought we should add a couple more to the list. So you probably do the big five all the time. Let's run through them. But um, I'm going to add a couple more just for detail's sake. Because like I say, at this time of year, we're doing drill downs. We're trying to find out why the numbers are what they are. And I can give you reports that may be a little more direct view rather than seeing in, you know, deposits and withdrawals. You can see only your disbursements or only your deposits. So balance sheet, of course, is one of the, of the normal ones you always want to run. So that's, you know, <laughs> you're going to run that no matter what. And of course, we know our assets need to equal our uh, liabilities and our equity. So run it, make sure those two numbers are the same and you're good to go. Okay, good old balance sheet. Uh, next on our list is the one I'm adding in here. One of the ones is the cash disbursement detail report. I really like the detail report because it actually will give you uh, client and matter information if checks were written for clients and matters. So you know exactly what matters were affected for each individual check. Okay, this is something additional on this report that's not on your normal cash disbursements listing. So that's a little extra you get here. Okay. Um, now, you know, I'm not saying the rest of these reports are good because everybody may like things a little different, but these are the ones I've chosen instead of just going through every single one the ones that I think we really should pay attention to. Um, on the flip side of disbursements is the daily posted cash receipt report. Okay, now this one you may already be using when you're doing your bank reconciliations because this, um, this is really deposits coming from our clients. So once again, a little preview mode here, make it a little bit bigger. This is every matter as deposits are made through the system with the date, the matter number, the description, of course, because that's how we know who's who, and the dollar amount. All right, so this is very crucial to keeping our client payments in order. Um, it, obviously, this feeds to the checkbook as well as the bank rec as well. So this is like a supplemental report, just like the detail disbursements listing that I like that feed into the other reports, but this way you're just extracting uh, either the disbursements or in this case, the receipts, so that it's a little cleaner view, so you don't get confused with all of the other stuff on the report. Now, the general journal listing, okay? If by some strange reason, because we know we never do it on purpose, if we are out of balance in our trial balance or in our ba uh, balance sheet, this is the report that will show you where, okay? So this general journal listing is every journal entry done by date in your system. Of course, you can pick a date range, which I'm going to do because we don't want to go back five years. Um, so obviously use that to your, to your benefit. And it's going to be every single journal entry, okay? So once again, if you are out of balance, you can see here on this report, you can see all of the debits and all of the credits and the ending total here. I've got this little thing in the way. Let me try to get it out of the way. Um, so you can see the debits and credits in that journal entry. Obviously, the bottom line should be equal, okay? And I've done a payroll one in here from entering payroll through a journal entry to make sure my debits equal my credits and of course all the accounts that are debited and credited while the journal entry is being done. So this will stick out like a sore thumb if you're out of balance your journal entry. A journal entry somewhere along the way will not be in balance and that is why you're not in balance on your other reports. So this is really getting down into the nitty gritty here with a viewpoint of, you know, did my debits equal my credits every time I made an entry into the system? So I really like this report when you're hunting down, you know, why am I out of balance by five bucks? And not, not your bank rec balance, this is your books, all right? The overall view of your books. So that is the general journal listing. And it can be pretty long, okay? Because it's everything you've done. So, you know, it's a good one to show the boss. Look at all the work I did this year. Okay. Then the counterbalance, well, 
this one just is the whole your general ledger again it's just in a different format this is account by account from your chart of accounts listing so this is once again a very long report but it's every single entry in every single account so if the tax account comes back and says okay why was your rent low you know rent expense should be you know a hefty number well you can use this report to drill down into the rent account and or any other account so once again i use a date range so that um, it's pulling from my start bar up here my speed bar so it's pulling with those dates and i open it up and okay operating account well obviously that's going to be several pages long because all of the entries or a majority of our entries hit the operating account but it goes through and shows every account trust account then it gets into your other assets your liability account okay all the way through your revenue accounts and of course all of the expense accounts so every entry now obviously mine's only from july and mine's not a real database so i bet your report's a lot longer than mine but this is one i keep for the ages um, print them to file or print them out, stick them in a binder where you have these reports that at any time anybody can look at. Okay, so that's another big one. Uh, let's see, where are we? Income statements. That's the fun one, right? Did we make any money? So you've got different choices here as far as different viewpoints of looking at them. Um, I, I always like the month and year to date, but this is a biggie. So you could just have that quick view of are we making money okay obviously i haven't done much in september in my training database here but our year to date is a little better uh, but it's going to show you all the money in and all the money out in an income statement format so here again your balance sheet your income statement and your trial balance those are the three that our books make up um, for our true accounting reports the others are kind of like supplemental okay so let's see what's next um all righty for our canadian friends we've got a few things there that they've added this year our trial balance all right that's the biggie that's combining your balance sheet with your income statement you all know that i'm sure um uh, and it's always going to start from the last input in or the first input in your abacus for years you have not closed so i've been using mine a while so there's a bunch of stuff in here and it's going to show the closing balances at the last time you closed the change in between and the ending balances now and like i say this is every account with activity from your chart of accounts so you always want to be sure that your debits equal your credits and if this is true wow you're 90 way the percent there okay now, one last bit I'd like to show you um, is putting all those reports together. I see somebody has their hand raised. Um, that's nice. I like saying hello to everybody. But if you have a question, we really do have to go through the question section, that uh, little box on the uh, GoToWebinar panel where you can type in your question. Otherwise, hey, how are you? That's great. Um, so. How do we put together a report group? Now, this is really my favorite part of this entire program, and that's that could show you a little bit about my life. Uh, but the report groups, okay? You have some, you should have some. Abacus uh, automatically puts some in here for you, but I like setting up my own. You know, I always want it my way. <laughs> so we open up our report groups, and you can see over here in the report group name, there's three or four, there's four of them that Abacus has built for you. And then there's the one I started today. Okay, so what you wanna do to get all these reports in one place, no matter what menu they're off of, okay, put them together in your group. And then when you want the reports, it's as easy as opening this up, coming down here to the bottom right-hand corner, telling them what date frame you wanna cover, and clicking on, I would say print or email, preview just brings them up on your screen and you know, you may wanna share these. So you could print them or you can email them off to the boss, whatever you wanna do. Um, but how do we set them up? Okay, well, first things first is you set up your name or whatever you wanna call them. 
So I clicked add and I added my name, Perry's report. Then you highlight your, your group, you come over here to our little folders and you go through and pick the report you want to include. So I've already put several in down here. This down here under reports included is actually a list of all the ones that I've chosen so far. So I've left a couple out so I could show you how. Um, let's add that trust detail report that I like so much. So I'm going to come to trust and open the folder. And then you come down and highlight your report you're looking to add to your group. And you go to the include button. Now, when you click include, it's going to go through the parameters. Okay. How, you know, what exactly do you want to include on this report? So if you have two different trust accounts, you actually will be pulling two different reports, one at a time for each different chart of account, uh, account number for your trust. Okay, so you could say go include the report for this trust account number and hit save and then come back in and do this again for your second trust account. So you have the, both reports in here. They're each listed separately because they're much easier to read when they're listed separately. So you can go through, and I kind of mentioned you can do this by timekeeper, and pull reports for one specific timekeeper. Make up the report group for that person and give them their reports. Um, or, like I say, by account number. So if I hit save, it just takes that and puts it in my list. And now that trust report, it doesn't tell me that it's for a specific account, but when you just run your report, each report will be in there separately. So last report let's add is our trial balance. I don't think I have that in here yet. So I highlight my name. I go to my general ledger because that's where my reports are, my GL reports are. I click on my trial balance. I click on include and uh, this opens it up, okay? Now, Abacus automatically knows the last time you close, so it will have a start date for you. Um, but of course, you could change that if you simply don't want prior years and you have not closed them. It's not a have to in Abacus any longer. You don't have to close your years. Um, so, you know, all the reports are from a start date to an end date. And of course, we hit save. It makes it part of our group. So, how easy is that? Okay, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of things to look at, you know, Mr. Boss or my tax accountant. So I'm going to come to my report groups. Simply come down here and say I either want to pull them by this, the date, uh, the speed bar dates, this year, this quarter, this month, or put in my own dates and hit the my destination viewpoint. Okay. So there you go. That are the, those 12 reports that I think are crucial for Abacus um, program, the Abacus Billing and Accounting program. But of course, I'm always going to suggest that you go through them all and find the ones your firm may like, especially with productivity. Everybody likes it a little different. So I only touched on the AR and the WIP there, but there are obviously lots of other reports to look at. So do we have any questions here about reports? Y'all are being kind of quiet today. I don't know if I'm just talking too much or what. I tend to do that. But um, I, there are weekly webinars, you know, that Abacus holds either on Abacus Law or Abacus Billing or Abacus Accounting. And we can always see those from the Abacus Next website to tell you what's coming up so that you can register and participate in them every month, or every week, I should say. Um, I rotate off with, with Scott for the law side. Um, so usually all, we also have or at least once or twice a month the Ask Me Anything report. So if you have questions about any other, you know, any parts of the program, we don't concentrate on one area, please. And if you send in your questions ahead of time, it gives the presenter a little more time to gather together information to feed back to you. So I always like getting reports, um, you know, or, or questions a little bit early so if you don't catch me. <laughs> oh, what do I oh, make my brain work? Okay, we do have a question. How do you close the year? Very good. Um, closing years is under the GL, done under the GL dropdown. Okay. 
And there are a, a few things that all go together here. They're all like in one little section. Now, let's start at the top. Um, the closing information. This tells you the last time you closed a year, okay? It says who did it, when they did it, okay? What year it was, um, so and what year end we used. So that's going to come through. That's just information only. Let's me know, okay? And once you do close a year, to lead up into how, once you do close a year, the big deal about that is you cannot go back in and reclose it, or I should say unclose it and work inside of it. So closing a year is permanent. You always want to have a full backup of data as well as your program before you close a year. Because what I, you know, you take that, you put that away somewhere on whatever external drive you backed it up to. And if the IRS comes in and wants to see that year and you want to be able to get into it and do stuff, well, you've got to have a backup that you can install on a standalone machine and actually get into it. Now, um, keeping up with that in mind, um, year end closing, okay. Yes, it is a permanent thing. Um, month end closing is a little different, and I'll try to cover that here in the next couple minutes. But you say what is the first date of the year you're closing through the ending date. So if you are closing a year, usually if you're running on a calendar fiscal year, it's from the first to the end of December, first of January, the end of December. This is telling you to have a full backup, to have done all your bank recs, because you're not going to be able to go back in to that and do anything from the December. Um, Print out all your reports, okay? So you have everything you could possibly need. Now, there is the archived years. So it doesn't delete the information. It just pushes it out into the archive. So it's not in all your other information. You can see stuff with the archive. So I could go back in and see 2009 in my case and see all of the information. This is just like the... GL journal activity except for closed years. So you can see everything, but the only thing you can do is really print here. There's no going in and editing or deleting buttons here. This is just to be able to look at it again. Okay. Now along that same tune, month in. Well, yes, if you would like to close your month, if your accountant's requesting you close a month, the month, that's fine. You can close your month and then you cannot access any kind of financial information. This does not have anything to do with billing. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with the trust ledgers. No data goes away ever on trust or billing. It's just on the GL side. When you close a month, it wants you to perhaps run your reports before you do so. And of course, tell it when. But if you, if I were to close September right now by mistake, I hit done, it's not going to let me back in. So what Abacus has done, and this is all by permissions only, so we don't get too freaked out here, uh, you can unclose a month. Okay, that saved my bacon more than once because I closed it by mistake. If I unclose it, it just takes you right back there, basically says, okay, you can access anything you need to access, and you can reclose it. Okay, let's see. It looks like we have another question. Let me see if I can read them. This is the part that I have a little problem with. I pull this up. Of course not. Let's see. Okay, can I show a report with? Come on down. Uh, timekeeper total fees collected per month. Okay. All right, Lori. Yes, there is a report for that under productivity. Okay. Now mine's a little sketchy because I don't use this, you know, I don't, truly don't do billing, but let's see here, timekeeper total fees collected per month. The timekeeper cash receipt report may be the one you're looking for because this is money that has been deposited into the system by the, you know, from your clients. Um, this, we, you can narrow it down by timekeeper um, here, of course, but, and also through your date frame. So that's going to show you and by different timekeeper type. You know, you could do it by the person who actually did the work, what time, what uh, fees collected were attributed to them, distributed to them in credit, um, or you can do it by the different levels of attorneys or timekeepers we have set up on the matter maintenance. But this one seems to be one people like a lot. Um, so it is by timekeeper, by date range, and it breaks it down 
um, by date, by matter, and by invoice for the amounts received for fees. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Our P&L report, that is technically called an income statement. So P&L is profit and loss. So our income statement under our GL is showing all revenue and all expenses. So it's just another name for the report. It, you know, I think everybody knows it kind of by P&L, um, but true accounting school tells you this is an income statement. So it here is the under income statements. And as I mentioned, there are a few different ways of looking at it. Um, sorry, I'm putting one on top of the other. But you can do a month and date, uh, month and year to date, which is showing all income, so income statement versus all expenses. And let's see. Oh, and a little graph. And if I pull it down to the bottom, it should give me a bottom number here. Okay, guess my firm's not doing so well. <laughs> I better go back and build my clients. Good thing mine's a made-up firm with just certain kinds of examples. But yeah, that's an income statement or a P&L. Okay, um, one more word on the um, productivity reports. Okay, there are lots of them. And I like to say, just touched on a few. Please get in there. If our reports are what you're looking for, th there are plenty of our reports versus fee reports. The hour reports are fed from your time tickets. The fee reports are fed from payments received. So that might help you unravel anything. If you, you know, are wondering why you're seeing the numbers you're seeing, that is where the, the dollars, the, the numbers are coming from. Payments received feeds the fee reports and your time tickets feed the hour reports. Okay. If you have specific questions about your reports for your firm, please uh, feel free to either go to support or you can submit them through the webinar um, email address and uh, they will get them to me. And then maybe I can help you decipher what's going on there. But, uh, you know, it really is based on the information fed in through the different parts of your abacus program. Okay. Well, guys, that was, um, that was a lot in a little bit of time. I do appreciate you sticking with me here. Um, I don't want to hold anybody up. I know we only allocate 30 minutes for this, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off. But please, any questions? Um, oh, let's see. What is the email address? It's webinars, uh, www.abacuslaw or abacusnext forward slash webinars.com should get the questions to us. Please visit us every week, and I look forward to talking to you all more. Have a lovely uh, afternoon and thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>